I'm so glad we're all together here at ICC Kids. It's the last week of June and hopefully you're having a fantastic summer. I know I am. We're finding out what it means to get in the mix and live every day with confidence. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. How do you think God sees you? In other words, what do you think God thinks about you? Well, let me tell you. He thinks you're amazing. He thinks you're totally unique and totally special. He knows there's no one else in the world like you because he made you in the first place. You can live every day with confidence when you remember just how much he loves you. Now, let's all stand up and sing to God together. He can do anything and we can have true confidence when we put our trust in him. Everyone up on your feet and here we go. On my count, let's kick it off together. Three, two, one, hit it. I 
worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness.
was wonderful. It's time to go over our values. Our first value is love God. We love God because He loved us first. Our second value is love people. We love people because God loves all people. Our third value is have fun. We have fun because God gives us joy. Our fourth and last value is make a difference. We make a difference because Jesus did. I love doing this. Hanging out with all of you, checking out a story from the Bible, and seeing what it has to do with our lives today. This story is a doozy too. The main guy in it had a ton of confidence in God. It took place when there were kings ruling God's people, the Israelites. Unfortunately, many of those kings didn't listen to God. God sent prophets to try to talk to the kings and encourage them to follow God. But often, the kings didn't pay any attention. One of those kings was named Ahab. Ahab never listened to God. In fact, he even built statues and temples for a false god called Baal. God sent a prophet named Elijah to deliver a message to Ahab to see if this stubborn king would finally listen. Elijah told King Ahab that there wouldn't be any dew or rain for a long time until God said so. And lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. For three whole years, there was a drought in the land. Ahab could see that something had to be done. He was desperate. However, instead of turning to God, he sent his wife Jezebel to hunt down all of the remaining prophets of God. Because Jezebel was out there hunting down prophets, Elijah took off and hid in a cave for a lot of those three long years. But God was with Elijah. God sent him food and water while he waited. Let's watch the rest of the story together. Good day, friends. I'm Graham. You ever had one of those days? You know, those days where it seems like nothing is going your way? When things seem impossible? Maybe you've had one of those weeks, one of those years even. Well, I've got some good news. I know what can make your day better. Music! But it's true. No matter how your day is going or what kind of mood you're in, music can help you turn things around. It can give you confidence. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. Here, I'll show you. Imagine that you're scared about something coming up in your future. All you have to do is play a little music, and then you'll start to feel better. Or what if you've got a big game coming up? You might be feeling a little nervous, a little jittery. Well, play some tunes. You'll be ready for the game in no time! But what if you're just feeling low? You can sit in your room all day moping, or you can Ooh. get up and get moving. You see, music can help. And there's so many different kinds of music to choose from. You'll have plenty of options when things seem impossible. Today's story will show us how God deals with the impossible. I think it might be impossible for me to move right now. I'll see you when I figure this out. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Kings, chapter 18. Israel was ruled by many kings who didn't listen to God, but King Ahab was the very worst. He even built a temple to a false god. Everybody worship Baal. He is very great because, I don't know, he can make it rain and stuff. What? But the Lord sent a prophet named Elijah to deliver a message to King Ahab. 
As the Lord lives, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years, except at my word. You pipsqueak. Baal can make it rain. Also, off with your head. Elijah quickly departed the palace, and at the Lord's direction, he escaped and hid east of the Jordan River. For three years, there was no rain in Israel. Impossible. I won't allow it. Baal, make it rain this instant. Crops failed, rivers and brooks dried up. King Ahab was desperate. In fact, his wife Jezebel even hunted down most of the prophets of God that were left in Israel. Off with their heads. But through it all, God provided food and water for Elijah. In the third year of the drought, God spoke to Elijah again. Go, speak to Ahab. Then I will send rain on the land. You do realize he wants to kill me. Okay, here goes. As Elijah traveled to the palace, he met King Ahab on the road. Is that you, you troubler of Israel? I haven't made trouble for Israel. You have. Yeah, well, I'm rubbing your glue. Whatever you say bounces off me and sticks to you. You've abandoned the Lord and followed Baal. <laughs> what else? He's more popular. You want a showdown? Fine. Gather all the people and meet me on Mount Carmel. Oh, oh, and bring all the prophets of Baal. Oh, you're on. King Ahab sent a message throughout the land, and the Israelites gathered on Mount Carmel, along with 450 of the prophets of Baal. Uh, how long will you go back and forth between two opinions? <laughs> if the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal's God, follow him. I'm the only prophet of the Lord left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Hey, get two bulls for us. Let Baal's prophets prepare one of the bulls and place it on an altar to Baal, but not light it. I'll put the other bull on an altar to the Lord. The God who answers by fire, well, he is God. What you say is good. The prophets of Baal prepared a bull as a sacrifice and placed it on the altar to Baal. A Baal, this is for you. Light this bull on fire. Hey, Baal, answer us. From morning until noon, the prophets of Baal danced around the altar, calling on their false god. <clears throat> hey, shout louder. Uh, maybe he's asleep or, or on a trip. <laughs> the prophets of Baal danced harder and shouted louder all through the afternoon, but there was still no answer. At last, Elijah stood up. Enough. Come here to me. Elijah took 12 large stones and rebuilt an altar to the Lord. Then he took the bowl and sticks of wood and placed them on the stones and dug a deep trench around the entire altar. He turned to several of the Israelites and said, Fill four large jars with water and pour it on the offering and the wood. You do know wet wood doesn't burn, right? Just do it. Now do it again. Do it a third time. The wood became so wet, water even flowed down the altar and filled the trench. Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, let everyone know that you are the one true God. Answer me, Lord, so these people will know that you are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. There was a long moment of silence. Everyone waited. Breathless. And then, fire fell from heaven onto the altar and instantly burned up the wet wood and the sacrifice, even licking up the water in the trench. The people fell on their faces. Yippee! Oh, God! The Lord is God! Woo Terrified, the prophets of Baal tried to escape, but were captured and wiped out. Elijah turned to King Ahab. Go, eat and drink, for there is the sound of a heavy rain. Though the sky was completely clear, in a short time, a tiny cloud appeared. More clouds joined the first. They turned dark and black. The wind rose, and fat, 
drops of rain splattered onto the dry earth for the first time in three years. Filled with God's strength and joy, Elijah raced ahead of King Ahab's chariot to the city. God had done the impossible. Music can help when you need a boost, but if you really want to know how to deal with the impossible, you should read the Bible. The things that seem impossible to us are totally possible for God. Listen, God sent fire down from heaven. He parted the Red Sea. He made the sun stand still. Jesus walked on water. He, he calmed a storm just by telling it to be quiet. He came back from the dead. Oh, and God created the earth, the sky, and the entire universe from nothing. God can do anything. Do you know what that means? It means that when you're having one of those days, or weeks, or months, or years, where things seem impossible, you can trust that God is still with you and that he's still in control. He can make your impossible seem small. Can you believe all that music fits onto this little thing? Doesn't seem possible. Hmm. Here's the one thing to remember today. God can do the impossible. And music can inspire us along the way. I'll see you next time. As the rain continued to fall, Elijah raced ahead of Ahab's chariot all the way back to the city. God had done the impossible. He brought fire down from the heavens. He ended the three-year drought and he showed everyone that he really is the one true God. Never forget this. God can do the impossible. There might be situations in your life that seem impossible. Having trouble with another kid in the neighborhood, feeling stuck because of something that's wrong at home. It's not always easy, but you can make the choice to trust God and believe that He is with you. You can stop and remind yourself that He is always in control. He's got a great plan for your life and He's there to help you when you feel down or discouraged. One last time, let's look at our memory verse for this month, Psalm 27, 13. Say it with me. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. It's true. We will see God's goodness right here and now. That doesn't mean that things will always go exactly the way we planned, but if we learn to trust God, we'll see His goodness even when things around us seem impossible. We'll find that we really can trust Him no matter what. Let's pray and ask God to help us trust Him like Elijah did. Everyone bow your head and pray with me. God, what an amazing story. What an amazing display of your power. Please help us see how you're working in all the different situations in our lives, even in those that seem impossible. Help us be confident in you and know that you'll come through. Give us the courage to trust you no matter what we might face today. We love you and we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being a part of ICC Kids. Come back next week.